Hello, I am Doll Angel, also known as Nicole, Paula Basper, Janine F, and who knows what. <laughs> I have lots of names. Uh, anyways, I'm a professional cu cu doll customizer in the U.S. And basically, I have been collecting dolls for a long time. But sort of the fun thing about me is there was a time I actually didn't collect dolls. Um, when I was roughly around 12, I actually sold all, well, not all, but basically 98% of, like, all my dolls. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a doll customizer. What? Well, there's actually a story to this. Um, so I was basically saving up a computer because one of the things about me, like, one of my biggest loves is writing. I love stories, I love characters, and one thing that drew me to dolls and what I do with my different collections over the years is I try to recreate those characters I had. Like, um, I had one character with brown hair and green eyes, so I found a Teresa with brown hair and green eyes to eventually make into that character. About a year after I sold everything to get my little dinky laptop to write all these cool stories on, I sort of, my friends decided to do a Barbie series video thing, not posted on YouTube. <laughs> just for fun as friends and when I looked to see what I had I really didn't have many dolls so I went to the store I actually went to Christmas I felt so embarrassed I'm like I need to put dolls on my Christmas list because I don't have really dolls so I put a few dolls in there I remember one was the Mona Lisa Da Vinci Barbie and just a few other things so when we got together a little after Christmas I actually had dolls to play with them with and we did that for a few years and eventually my friend, she was into American Girl Dolls. Um, she learned about pull-up, she told me about pull-up. And before you know, well she just told me about it, she said you ordered a doll, I looked him up, I ordered one too. I didn't even see, well she got her doll and I didn't even, well, <laughs> see it yet. There I go, spending my money on dolls. But it, it was fun and it was worth it and it's a great ride and a great hobby. I have been collecting since 2012, it's not 2016, so that makes it roughly around four years. And the dolls I normally focus on are Pullet, Tang, Dale, and my shoes are in my room. Can decide, had too many favorites, didn't want to make them jealous. But one of the things that really drew me to pull up was the custom ability and the joints. I am a person who's actually not as a big of a fan of figurines. Mostly because of the fact is they just sit there. And they just look pretty you sit there and you can't do anything with them. Well, other than stare at them, but I like being able to move them and pose them and move their eyes around and make them blink and it was just all stuff that was just so new to me and cool. I was like, what? They can close its eyes by itself? I mean, like, come on! It can wink! It can wink! I had never seen a doll that could do that before, so I was personally pretty excited when I learned about these dolls. They were very movable, customizable. Again, when I was customized, trying to make dolls into my characters, these were perfect. I could get wigs. I eventually learned how to make wigs. And now I know how to make glass eye chips. I mean, it was a really exciting process. And to be able to put my... And sort of like that rough, sort of like love of those characters and being able to spread my creativity into these dolls and sort of have fun with them. And actually, my friends and I, we... Well, my one friend who was in it, we started filming with the dolls too. <laughs> but yeah, that's another story for another time. I started customizing a uh, little probably over a year after I got into the pull-up hobby. I bought myself a clone by accident. Her name is Lucara. Lucara or Lucaria? Well, it's spelled Lucara, but her name's actually Lucaria. She looked like this. Wasn't she pretty? It took me a little bit while to figure out that she was a fake. But you know what? I still love her to this day. But that wasn't really what's exactly started my customizing career, which really started my career, I have to say, was a custom pull-up. Actually, she's a modified 
accustomed. Basically what happens is she was accustomed, she was a doll, a sock doll with beautiful gorgeous rhythms, but um, her whole face up was removed, it was actually, it was Maria who did it, and she just did everything, kept the lips, and man that doll was the most beautiful, beautiful doll I've ever seen on by one of my friends. I will show you a picture, but <laughs> I don't have the rights to that photo, so I can't, but she was just so beautiful, breathtaking, like, all oh, that doll, she was, oh, she's gorgeous. But one of the main problems for me with the custom dolls was the <coughs> price tag. Custom dolls are expensive! Why? Because there's one, they're basically one of a kind, even if you do dolls sort of like sort of off of each other, or like, replicas or copies or whatever, like I mean many Elsas, but each Elsa is a little bit different because each doll is one of a kind and that's why that they're so special that's why there's something that's more expensive and unique because there's only one of them in the world even if it looks so much another one, there's still only one of that particular doll so, yeah so after that, after seeing that doll and being blown away and realizing I could never afford something like that I decided, you know what if I'm just gonna try to do this myself, so I customized the car a few more times, and eventually, around Christmas, I went up to doing my first pull-up that wasn't clone, and her name is Esther, and I think she turned out pretty good. I'll give you a sort of closer look. She's kind of spunky. Uh, one of the things I wanted with her was big blushies. <laughs> yeah, I really like her. So. After that, I started getting a few dolls together, and I went to Puddle that following year, because I actually could have made it to the year before that, but I didn't know it existed until after Puddle. <laughs> but I went to Puddle, I sold two dolls there, and they actually went to really nice homes, and it was really nice to see people who really enjoyed my work. So after that, I kept on making more, and a few more, and a few more, and before I knew it, it kind of grew into an international business. And you know what? I'm very... It's been a really exciting trip and a very exciting road, and I got to meet a lot of really great and interesting people. So it's just been a really great experience overall. What I like most about customizing... The doll being done! Okay, besides the doll being done, 100% complete, ready for having fun with her photographing, my favorite part would actually... My other favorite part is when the doll gets to its rightful home. Because me, when the person's like really happy and they have the doll and they just say it's like, woman says she's like, it's perfect, it's just how I wanted it to be. It makes me very happy because I was able to make something and make someone else happy and they're able to enjoy that doll for the rest of their lives. Some of the challenges I faced as a beginner were, of course, the eyebrows. The eyebrows are some of the most painstaking things you can ever do. So, well, it depends. It, it all depends. Sometimes the lashes, sometimes the lips. I mean, it, it all depends. Uh, I remember Nathaniel here. He was taking Scarecrow originally. Yeah, he doesn't look much like a Scarecrow anymore, but he made a really nice tang. And... I cannot tell you how many times I redid his eyebrows until they are how they are right now. I mean, they literally almost took me forever. <laughs> oh man, don't get me started. But with each passing doll, it slowly got easier and easier and easier. Another thing I've learned is also the quality of materials. If you use good quality materials, you will get a better result. Um, other Another challenge I have faced is glossing. Now you're wondering like gloss shouldn't that be easier, just go swipe, swipe, swipe. Well, one thing I've learned very early on when I was working on one of my dolls is you might say it dries in an hour. It doesn't dry in an hour. Wait three or more hours, to be honest. Sometimes you can gloss something doesn't dry and then you touch it, you smear it, and it's just a disaster. So what I would probably say is wait extra on the drawing time. My favorite customs I've worked on so far. Well, I think 
favorite and most enjoyable are sort of two different questions, but the dolls I enjoy the most overall, like during the process and after the process, are the ones that are different. And what I mean by different is out of the norm, ordinary, sore thumbs. I mean like this doll like stands out of a crap. Because I own a lot of pull-ups and I have created a lot of pull-ups, I like ones that sort of stand out from every other doll in the room. So sometimes I give them crazy hair or crazy eyes or funky expressions and I'm going to show you one of my favorites. <laughs> this is my Tang MJ. I got him for Christmas last year. And I just recently been able to custom it. Now he's not finished, well his face is finished, I just have to finish shading his ears properly. But as you can tell, he is a very interesting expression. Um, he was a test dummy for a few things. Um, I sort of carved out a smirk for him. <laughs> that was a little scary because I'd never really gone that far. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. He has here here eye chips. And he sort of has a very lashy look to him, but he has just a really weird expression with the raised eyebrow and the smirk. He's just really funny. So he, I personally get a kick out of him. <laughs> and this is another one. This is Kana. One thing about her, she's a mocha skinned doll. Very dark skinned. Also sticks out in a room. Um, another thing I really like about her is white freckles, white dotted freckles. Now there's many ways to do freckles. I have my other one. This is my splatter. She has splattered. You can also dot them or with a paintbrush too or with pencil, but these are white dotted. I also like her lash style. I also like dolls with weird lash styles. And this boy, I like him because he has a bit more of a chalk base. He's more softer. Less intricate eyebrows, but they really suit him well. This is actually Asper's brother. His name is Adrian. But anyways, yeah, once you just do a lot of dolls, it's the more variety, the better, the more fun. It keeps the inspiration flowing. What drew me to customizing pull-ups in particular is basically the custom ability. You can change their eye chips, their wigs, their bodies their makeup. You can change whatever you want. And over this period of time I learned to try to stretch that as much as I could and I have built and constructed things I never even dreamed I could, to be honest. I surprised myself. <laughs> but I think the key is sort of like to keep trying and trying to take what you love and learn how to improve and get better at it. It's been a really interesting ride and gotta meet Lots of really neat people, lots of different stories, see a whole bunch of different dolls, and yeah, it's fun. It is fun. There are a few things you are going to need. I know not everything is the cheapest option, but if you want a quality result that actually lasts, there's a few things you will want. One is acrylic paints. Do not use oils or Oils or watercolors, that was it, watercolors. Watercolors will chip off and oils will stain your doll. I would not suggest using either of those. So acrylic is your friend. Um, another thing I'll check is they is sealant. Mr. Super Clear UV cut in flat. The matte version don't get because that's the one that cracks. The flat version is the one that doesn't crack. And so far all these puppies have done great, no cracks, no nothing, they hold up great, and I couldn't be more satisfied. And also when you get sealant, try to make sure it has a UV protection. Why? So your dolls won't have a likely chance of fading and yellowing. You work so hard on the face up, you don't want to go down the drain. Um, another thing is quality pestle chalk. Now I know it's like, it's expensive. Well, Here's the thing, only get what you need. If you're just gonna custom like one or two dolls, get the colors you need for those one or two dolls. You don't need to get a huge set or all these different colors. Another thing I would suggest if you need like a more variety of colors, if you're gonna do a few dolls or whatever, I would actually suggest um, waiting for a coupon and getting sort of like one of those like big, those are big ones, sort of like the big sets. And one of the ones I got was um, the half sticks. I got a whole bunch of colors. 
And honestly, you don't really use pastel chalk that fast. You take it, you rub it on paper, you get a little bit, a little dust off. I mean, I still have like all my sticks from years ago and they work great. If someone's interested in commission, best ways to contact me are either Flickr mail, actual email, that's probably actually the best, and um, messaging on the Dolly Market form. I am on there too. I'm also at Puddle, so you, if you're at Puddle, I do sometimes accept drop-offs and custom pickups. You're just going to have to notify me beforehand. Um, yeah, so I think that's basically it. And I hope you enjoyed this little interview as much as I have.